I'm in Bristol to visit a ship that changed everything. This is the SS Great Britain. By the 19th, 1843, Prince Albert launched the SS Great Britain from a specially built dry dock in the Bristol Harbour. Designed by Isambard Kingdom Brunel, she was the biggest, fastest and most innovative ship ever built and would revolutionise shipbuilding for the next 100 years. A true prototype, her hull built from raw iron, which many claim due to her size would never float. Brunel rejected using conventional paddle wheels to drive his ship, instead he gave the SS Great Britain a screw propeller. To power this propeller he used a massive steam engine weighing in at 350 tonnes and three storeys high. Designed by Thomas Guppy in collaboration with Brunel, the engine was a development of the Triangle Engine, the first V engine invented by Brunel's father Mark. It produced 1000 horsepower. Victorian equivalent of today's 70,000 horsepower Rolls-Royce Olympus engines. The ship had a crew of 120 and room for 360 passengers. Her upper two passenger decks were lavish and had everything. She was a ship for everyone, taking both first and second class passengers and is regarded by many to be the world's first true ocean liner. On the 26th of July 1845 she made a maiden voyage from Liverpool to New York in 14 days and 20 hours at an average speed of 9.25 knots, slower than the prevailing record. On her next crossing to New York, carrying 104 passengers, the ship ran into heavy weather losing a mast and three propeller blades. In her second season of service, Great Britain successfully completed two round trips to New York at an acceptable speed. Embarking on her third passage of the season to New York, her captain made a series of navigational errors that resulted in her being run aground in Dundrum Bay on the northeast coast of Ireland on the 22nd of September. She remained aground for almost a year, protected by temporary measures organised by Brunel and James Brennan. After languishing in Princess Dock, Liverpool for some time, she was sold to Gibson Bright & Co. The original engines were removed and replaced with a pair of smaller, lighter and more modern oscillating engines. The propeller was replaced with a slightly smaller three-bladed model. The five-mast schooner sail plan was replaced by four masts, two of which were square-rigged. Great Britain went back into service on the New York run. After only one further round trip, she was sold again to Anthony Gibson's sons. Anthony Gibson's sons gave her a third refit. Her passenger accommodation was increased from 360 to 730 and her sail plan altered to a traditional three-masted square-rigged pattern. In 1852, 
Great Britain made her first voyage to Melbourne, Australia, carrying 630 emigrants. She excited great interest there, with 4,000 people paying a shilling each to inspect her. She operated on the England-Australia route for almost 30 years, with two brief interruptions being used as a troop ship during the Crimean War and the Indian Mutiny. Great Britain was converted into a sailing ship to transport bulk coal. She made her final voyage in 1886 after loading it with coal and leaving Penarth Dock in Wales for Panama on the 8th of February. After a fire on board en route, she was found on arrival at Port Stanley in the Falkland Islands to be damaged beyond economic repair. She was sold to the Falkland Islands Company and used afloat as a storage hulk coal bunker until 1937 when she was towed to Sparrow Cove, scuttled and abandoned. And that should have been the end. Over 30 years later, she was to embark on one last most remarkable voyage. The SS Great Britain project was set up to recover her, and in 1970 she was refloated and placed onto a pontoon and made an incredible journey across the Atlantic 8,000 miles back to Bristol. The fact she was made of wrought iron saved her. Any steel ship would have long rusted away. In Avonmouth docks, the ship was taken off the pontoon in preparation for her to re-enter into Bristol. Now truly afloat, on Sunday the 5th of July, the ship was towed up the River Avon to Bristol. On July the 19th, 1970, she went back into the dry dock where she was built, exactly 127 years to the day from when she was launched. And this is where you can see her today as a working museum. A truly innovative ship changed the history of shipbuilding forever. If you've enjoyed this short documentary, please like and subscribe. Until next time.